the party to communicate with fellow Zimbabweans and all stakeholders to the effect that you know that on the 11th um, of uh, October, we announced our disengagement from parliament and local authorities uh, to address uh, particularly the issue of the illegal recalls that have been affected both by the Minister of Local Government and by the Speaker of Parliament. We set a number of issues that we felt must be resolved both by Parliament and local government. And to that effect, we made several steps. One of it is the legal route. We made sure that we take the issue to the court. And you know that there's an urgent matter that is going to be heard by the High Court of Zimbabwe on the 2nd of November to make sure that this issue has been resolved. Secondly, we also engaged here domestically with fellow citizens and different stakeholders, particularly uh, the chain champions and drivers of the movement on the necessary political program of action to resolve the crisis that we're facing. And thirdly, is our engagement with um, parliamentary forums in the region and internationally, which we think are key and we are members of those particular forums. And they're important to make sure that they help us to resolve part of the crisis in our country. And fourthly, of course, was our engagement at SADC region level and you are aware of the extraordinary summit and one of the issues that we have tabled there in terms of our writing and engagement with SADC is about the issue of the legal recourse and the broad crisis of legitimacy and governance questions in our country. So to that effect, you know that the 14 days uh, expired on the 25th, which was yesterday, and we are taking this uh, particular period to make sure that we review and engage with other key stakeholders on the next a political program of action. We are very thankful to our chain champions, members of parliament and councillors because there was total compliance on this political decision by our movement, by the citizens' movement. And of course, we salute and thank the citizens because they stood firm in support of their movement so that we correct uh, this um, uh, crisis that we're facing. And so we are very clear as a movement, very soon we're going to pronounce, particularly in respect of the fact that the issue is in the hands of the court and we expect that the principles of natural justice are going to apply so that we restore sanity in parliament and in local authorities so that those that have been given, mandated by the people, are able to be returned back. Because the Speaker of Parliament, as you are aware, acted on error on a fraud and later that he was not supposed to be receiving and particularly acting on. So because of those reasons, this issue has been in the hands of the court and we expect that on the 2nd of November, we're also going to pronounce ourselves in respect of the decision and the judgment that is going to come uh, from the court. Mm, Mr. One Mr. Chabangu is alleging that um, you went back to parliament after he ordered you to go back, saying that um, it is the position of what he claims the genuine CCC or the original CCC uh, that you go back to parliament and that it has nothing to do with your earlier statement. Look, our statement was very clear and emphatically so that we are disengaging from parliament for 14 days and we have had a meeting also to give an update with Mr. Mdenda, the Speaker of Parliament, particularly to have these issues resolved. And a number of issues, you know that there was terrible treatment of our members of Parliament in the last parliamentary sessions. And we've been having this engagement through different organs of Parliament. And we are assuring citizens and we are very confident about the intentions and the direction to have those issues resolved so that we focus on the big national questions in our country. You know that very soon budget is coming. You know that there are key national issues that we are deployed by the citizens because two responsibilities are mandated to members of parliament. The first responsibility is to make sure that we make the law for the benefit of our people. We are a social democratic outfit and it is important that we are there in parliament to make sure that we advance proper laws and that is the mandate that we must execute. Secondly, is to hold the executive to account. That is why people voted for members of parliament for triple so that we are able to hold the executive to account. So we are begging parliament to make sure that all these issues and responsibility bestowed upon us by the people while this, uh, these issues are being resolved and we are going to announce in terms of the political program of action that we are taking in relation to uh, parliament. Look, we have no time for charlatans. We are focusing on big national questions. The issues that we are addressing here are about national um, issues. They don't involve imposters. Impositors don't have a role to play in the national democratic project. We are very serious and very clear in terms of the task at hand. We have no time for jokers. We have no time for people who are acting, of course, as total is on them points to try and advance and, of course, to try and delay the democratic project. So we are focused on the big question. What is the big question in this country? It's the question of legitimacy. It's the question of governance. 
is the question of the crisis that we face post the 2023 election. And this is the issue that we are focusing on and we are going to make sure that we focus on those big questions. Smaller questions about what people decide to do and not to do, it is within um, uh, what they decide to do, but we are focused on the important task and the task given upon those big Look, the question of by-election, and let me respond it very clearly about by-election. The question must never be about whether we participate or not. The big question is whether or not there is supposed to be by-election in this country. Because what necessitates by-election is when there is a vacancy that arises on the basis of the death of a member or a political party recalls the sending and the sponsoring political party. You know, and it is acknowledged at law before the courts by an oath of uh, court that uh, the speaker acted on error, the speaker acted on a letter that does not come from the citizens' coalition for change, as led by advocate Nessie So on that basis, Triple C as a political party has not recalled these members of parliament. Therefore, the announcement and the pronunciation of uh, a by-election is an unconstitutional act because it is born out of an act that was not supposed to happen because the speaker acted on error as I've said. So we don't think and we don't believe that there must be by-election because we have not recalled any member of parliament. There is no death of a member of parliament that has been assisted. And we are looking forward that the courts of law in Zimbabwe, whose fidelity is to the constitution, are going to ensure that there is sanity, there is respect of the law in this country. And when there is respect of the law, particularly the out utterance pattern, which is the principle of natural justice, which gives the cause to interpret the law in understanding that when there is an issue, they must look at the issue without favor, without uh, prejudice. Therefore, the court must, and the court of Zimbabwe must, make sure that they rule in favor of the law. Because Triple C, as a movement, has not recalled any member of parliament, and therefore there cannot be any by-election to talk about. Because that letter, that pronunciation, that proclamation was born out of the decision taken by the speaker, a speaker who acted on an error, on a letter, by also on his acknowledgement that did not come from the Citizens Coalition for Change, as led by African Mr. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.